Welcome back to the channel, Bruno here. And today we're gonna explore the only build solution of the many options and timelines of the Igualada Cemetery by Enric Miralles and Carmen Pinos. One of the most lyrical projects of the last 40 years in Spain, an architecture that moves between the doubt and the experimentation, between repetition and curiosity, the exploration of the place and observation. One of the mistakes some could do would be to see their work just as plastic expressionism, because their architectures and references are very wide, crossing from other disciplines and born from pre-existence, location and intuition, a consequence of a continuous search. Enric Miralles and Carme Pinos would meet while studying in the University of Barcelona and after working several years for other studios that would open their own practice in 1984. At this point, in the beginning of the 80s, the country just transitioned from a dictatorship to a democracy and it's in need of plenty of new construction, especially public spaces and public equipments to get up to date after many years of neglect. Their first built projects were either public competitions or direct commissions. The Igualada Park and Cemetery project is published in 1983 and they are selected in April 85 as the winners, although the construction won't be completed to say something until more than 10 years later, with some relevant changes, mainly due to budget limitations. Miralles was one of the most relevant, interesting and exciting architects from his generation. His universe and his creative output was unmatched. He also had a very wide range of tools coming from different disciplines, like philosophy, painting and photography. He attracted the attention and didn't shy away from the spotlight. If he had the time, he would have probably reached the levels of recognition of Gaudí, even outside the academic circles of architecture. Carme Pinos, on the counterpart, is a more rational architect who placed herself consciously a bit more in the shadow of this partnership publicly. But make no mistake, her contributions to the projects was invaluable and the quality of her architecture is as well outstanding. She actually just received the 2021 Spanish Architecture Prize. Her architecture starts from a thorough study of the location, intuition and deep observation, sometimes a limit, sometimes topography, to generate the narrative, sequence and rituals of the uses. They had very complementary personalities and this partnership produced great projects during the seven years it lasted. For me, this is one of their best works, or at least the one I connect the most with. Before I go into the project itself, let me take you through their methodology and some of the references and influences visible in their work. On their day-to-day, -day, they mostly worked and developed the projects from the plan, and they believed the plan articulated the spaces and said more about the ideas in the project than the sections, although these were still present in the process, together with small models of the projects. They didn't produce axonometries or any kind of 3D visualizations until or unless they had to submit material for the competitions. If we look at the plans, we won't see any overarching grid organizing or unifying the whole project, but more a succession of small parts articulating the spaces that follow the dialogue and the small stories each space would enable and create. The same thing could be seen in the way Miralles used to photograph the locations for the projects. He used to do 20 or 30 pictures of small portions of the view and put them together in some kind of collage. The intent with this approach was to be able to capture different points in time in the same location, focus on the individual element and consider it a part and a whole, and to break the central perspective point. This same approach could be seen in the David Hockney collages as a very direct inspiration, but not only, also in Dadaism or Russian constructivism several elements placed together at the same time and sometimes different versions of the same element. Which takes me to another very important concept in their architecture, the structure of time in the projects. If you see any of the conferences or read interviews from this time, you will see they treat the projects as an iterative and non-finishing process that would go on and on, searching for questions and keep evolving across variations. The built project is not a final result, but another one of those possibilities and iterations of the development, and a final accumulation of the explored possibilities. They don't consider the built project as the best, and they're definitely not privileging this solution over others. The doubt in regards to the question of what the best solution is, 
and what the final solution is, is always an open end and the process would continue even after the project has reached its new life with the end user. In regards to the same point of time and the projects, they would also consider pre-existence even if that element in particular that was once part of the location is not there anymore. They avoid privileging the current state of the location over the past state, and they see the place as a continuum. The place as a now and before it had what is currently in it, and before that, and before that. Like an accumulation of all the states and considering them all equally relevant for the proposal and potential solutions. Also, their architectures were born from the observation of the place and study of the location, the topography, experimentation with the limits, what the place is before their intervention, and sometimes even built from the outside. Forgetting the final form and building the project from the intuition with that sensibility, but at the same time, taking the freedom regarding the geometries and graphic representations. Because they produced beautiful and very condensed plans, with lots of information in them and very non-hierarchical regarding the lines and their representation. It was a competition they do together in 1985 and they worked together on it until 1989, but it was completed after their partnership is dissolved. According to Carme Pinoz, the poetic and rhetoric present in the project reflected more and Rick's approach to architecture. And in a way, this project enacts their methodology because that afterlife of the project that I was referring to after it's been finished and that never ending process of the architect in the project happens here, with over 10 years spanning from the competition to the last completed construction phases, even considering it was never fully completed like on purpose. When they win the cemetery competition in 1985, they use the money prize to go to Sweden and visit the Woodland Cemetery by Asplund and Leverance as well as the other cemeteries that Leverance built on his own. Their cemetery proposal focuses on the relationship between the cemetery and the location already from the beginning, on the ambiguity of the site, dealing with the building and the landscape at the same time, on how the people could use that space more interestingly than forcing the users to use it in a specific way. A project born from opening the earth, from the negative, more like the gap that appears after doing the cut, being filled up with the niches on both sides and the trees stopping the space. Here is the main axis. From this point, the split of the levels can be seen. The chapel and the service building next to the entrance and a hint of something else happening there. That interior space of the cemetery descending with the cul-de-sac at the end, the open-air chapel where the pantheons are. In recent years, as well, the crematory was designed by Carmen Pinos and built on the top level of the cemetery where the garden was already located and it has its separate entry. The Spanish cemetery has niches. Instead of burying the coffins, they are commonly placed in wall-like structures. In this case, the niches lean against the hill like a retaining wall, organizing themselves in banks at different levels. Their intention wasn't to build a street, but an interior space where the niches would be on both sides, one side more rigid with only one orientation and other side coming and going with the trees closing that space completely. A space where time would be a static element and would regenerate through the tree's foliage. These curves would open spaces that create static-like spaces more than dynamic ones, where things could happen, like ceremonies. This section of the final project, after that open-air space turns around, never got built, like waiting to happen. The elements for the niches were produced in precast concrete. The precast concrete chapters create a roof for that cat space through the landscape and also replicate the hills around the cemetery. Due to the very low quality of the prefabricated materials used for the project, they decided to cut the pieces more aggressively and create gaps between them, focusing on the shadows. The different banks are connected with these stairs in a perpendicular way to the descent through earth and bodies. This was, according to Miralles, the space that defines and resumes the whole project. 
a functional space partially buried, trying to find the equilibrium between a straight opaque skin to the outside covered in precast concrete elements and a curved wall built with glass bricks and natural light coming from the top. The sum more than the opposition, with the same game as the present in the cemetery. Concatenated spaces next to each other, a room for the priest with a direct connection to the chapel space through this door. The chapel is articulated around the process of the ceremony, more a consequence of what happens there. Unfortunately, this space was never fully completed. This space was going to be a corridor bathed with natural light coming from the top. The triangular shape, almost or partially buried, the ceremony would happen facing the light coming from those skylights and leaving the sanctuary on the corner. Generated more from what's outside than what's happening inside. The space was designed to be closed with a crystal wall open when being used and dark and invisible when closed, with a section of it being a sliding door closed to where the door for the priest is and another door built in two rotating around the center point. The two beams supporting the roof structure of the chapel. The space was designed to have no supports at all and this cross was the only religious symbol visible. Adjacent to this triangular chapel, the stair connecting these spaces to the park on top. And almost as a reply to this space, we saw earlier the open square, like an open air chapel, the other head of the project. The precast concrete elements are not present here, just the gap mimicking the earth after the project has been built. The initial request to build a park cemetery was always present, but from 85 to 87, significant changes are introduced in the project. The most significant one was leaving the set shape present in the competition behind. This set was also part of the project title because cemetery in Catalan is actually written with a C, but they used the Z letter in the name as a connection to the shape of the project and the cross instead of a T. Anyway, in that continuous repetition of the process that I was mentioning in their methodology, the project went from the Z, splitting construction in several phases, to the final solution seen in the built project, the S. The competition proposal designed the burial sequence to happen in the chapel, then the mourners would walk through bridges over these cuts and descend to the burial point through stairs. The open square, that end of the path I just mentioned, present currently, was not in the project yet. The service building is located at the same position and its relation to the chapel is the same with the opaque skin. The chapel remained unchanged across time, but the initial distribution from the entrance was a bit different. Instead of that static shape of the back built in the final solution, it had more like a roundabout split in the ways in two paths with the cross lines. Also, the precast elements were different. The chapiters were still not present, and that closed space, the interior space we were mentioning earlier, was more a street section with walls on both sides, and that poetic of the two sides with one rigid side and one swinging side, and letting the earth create open spaces where things would happen is not present here still. It's interesting because the scale of the project allowed to build it in a very crafted way, almost hand in hand with the workers. And not only the building was thought of and designed, but also all the additional elements and details, something very much part of their approach to the projects, almost like another way of balancing the importance of the project. They designed the tombstones in casted iron with the inclusion of this overlay of shapes of the plants and the cross that would repeat for all of them, also present in the door of the service building. The concrete precast shapes present in the whole cemetery, the panels for the niches as well as the chapiters. These panels repeat in different combinations and positions, creating those rocking back and forth shapes. The gate, with those three arms that could be articulated and more or less open and close the access path to the cemetery. 
and the dissection table designed for the service building. Half table, half bicycle wheel that would allow rotation. Also, the revolving door for the priest was intended to have been designed with fish-like details. It is a pity that we didn't have the luck to see all the chapel spaces completed. It would have been fantastic to see it in use and the mass spaces fully built. And I'm sure we would have discovered many additional nuances in that life. But perhaps the project is just a manifestation of their method. Always unfinished, born of curiosity where those accidents can be more, less important and sometimes be the project. Lines that repeat, continuously searched and never completely danced and discovered like his own life. Perhaps he's still finding his rhythm for the project, asking the place again and again how to imagine other invisible paths, and we are the ones looking in the wrong time.